Hey everybody, how's it going? Hades Timer here, and we are taking a look at Yakuza 0 on the PC. Uh, now, y Yakuza 0 came out um, in the US on consoles last year, uh, if memory serves. Uh, this year, we saw Yakuza... Actually... Last year we saw Yakuza 0, and then later on in the year we saw Yakuza Kiwami, both for the PS4, and then we saw, this year, Yakuza Kiwami 2. Now, these games uh, chart the uh, early career of Kazura Kiru, and... Um, he basically is the main, of course, he's the main character in all these, but uh, Yakuza 0, as the name implies, is a retelling of the first Yakuza game that came out quite a while. Uh, I believe it was on the PS2, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the cool thing about Yakuza 0 for the PC is that you have control over all of the visual, uh, you know, all of the, the visual upgrades or downgrades or whatever you want to do with it. The problem is, is that uh, it's not quite optimized. Um, now, the reason why I say that is because you, there's a lot you can do with the game visually as far as uh, upgrading and downgrading, but it does not go far enough. It will only downgrade to a certain point. Uh, and this is very uh, similar to games that, uh, you know, like Far Cry 5, for instance, will only downgrade so far. Um, I believe uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider will only downgrade so far. All these different things. Obviously, they're using some of the console settings as like a baseline so that you can't go below a certain console setting, which I'm assuming is like Xbox One. Um, so I think that's the reason, uh, because in other games, I think that the reason would be that the, that the some of the things are baked in, you know, to the game code, and if you start messing with it, then interactions get screwed up and things like that. This, I would think, would not be a new enough game to have that kind of uh, complexity as far as, uh, you know, things in the game world interacting with things outside of the game world, things like that. But anyway, um, so the main thing you want to take a look at here is the super sampling. Um, you can super sample uh, from either four times or eight times. That is the biggest, or you can shut it off, which... I don't know why you would do that, but anyway, um, the that is the biggest uh, that is the biggest effect on frame rate. Uh, the game can you if you turn the super sampling all the way down to I think you could do it. I think it's two four and eight. Sorry about that. Um, if you turn it all the way down to off or to two. Um, you can get a ton of frame rate, even at 4K. So, uh, I believe on 2 or off with a 1080 Ti and an 8700K, you're looking at like, I don't know, around 125 frames a second. Um, maybe a little more than that, depending on what's going on. However, you turn up that super sampling to anywhere beyond 4, and you can end up with a frame rate, well, eight times super sampling in this game will put the frame rate somewhere between 15 and 30 frame, 15 and 25 frames a second in that, with that same configuration. Um, Anti-aliasing does nothing uh, as far as video memory uh, in this game. I don't know how they're using it specifically. But the video memory, video memory wise, there is no effect. I mean, you can have it on ultra, you can have it off. And as far as I can tell, unless it's like, you know, five frames or something like that, 
it makes absolutely no difference. So what we're looking at here is everything turned up to ultra. The only thing that I ha I have I even have the super uh, I even have the uh, anti aliasing set on ultra. Um, I mostly did this for uh, you know like just random objects in the environment and stuff to for them to look better. Uh, the game is I think the game is using the textures from the original game. Uh, or not maybe the original game, but the game on the consoles. So it, it, there's only so much you can do with it. So because the anti-aliasing really has no effect as far as like on the memory, I just turned it on all the way. It's like, yeah, whatever. Um, I have the super sampling set to four times and I'm getting about 30 frames a second depending on what's going on. Um... It's fine. Uh, 30 frames a second in this game is perfectly fine. It's perfectly acceptable. Um, and it and having that super sampling makes the cutscenes look amazing. And uh, some of the other areas look a little bit better than normal as well. So uh, it's definitely a push as far as getting your system to do it. And I would be very interested to, to see if like a 1080 Ti... Uh, would be, I mean, not a 1080 Ti, uh, 2080 Ti would be able to turn on that eight times super sampling and be able to uh, get it to run at a decent frame rate. Um, I don't know. I mean, the game obviously is not going to be supporting DL DLSS, but if even because the 2080 Ti is so much, has just that much more power, um, like it generally speaking does about 30 frames a second more on every game. If it did 30 frames a second more on this game, that would be, pardon me, that would be between 35 and 45 frames a second. And that would be playable. So that would be nice. Also, uh, with that on, I think the game would look even better than it already does, which I think the game looks pretty freaking amazing as it is, uh, especially for a game that is, you know, a remaster of, uh, a game that came out on the PS2. Um, there are a lot of, they have tried to update the game as much as they possibly can without taking away what made the game what it was. Um, it is definitely a lot more similar to the modern, Yakuza games in a lot of ways, but it also is limited in certain ways that the modern Yakuza games are not. Um, mostly in the depth of the side activities. Um, Yakuza 6, for instance, has very deep side activities. Um, this is much less so. Uh, the sub-stories in this are not as... Um, extensive or complicated as the those in Yakuza 6. Um, so don't come into this with the idea of this being like Yakuza 6. If you've played Yakuza 6, this is really a way to uh, begin the story for Yakuza uh, without um, having to go back and play a PS2 or a PS3 game. So uh, that's really what this is. Also, it's the first time Yakuza's been on the PC, so uh, we I really can't wait for the whole series to eventually uh, come out on the PC, which it looks like that's what they're going to be doing. So that is going to be amazing, and also being able to play all these games on PC with you know evolving hardware and everything else is going to be wonderful. Um, so they're not trapped back on old consoles that. You know, you can only make it look so good even with, um, you know, even with emulation. There's only so much you can do. I mean, you know. Um, so, uh, it's great. Uh, I think the game is amazing. The cutscenes, as always, for Yakuza games are absolutely mind-blowing. They look so wonderful. Um, and I can't wait for the new game from this company, Project Judge, uh, to come out because uh, it looks like they even went even further 
um, with uh, how good the cutscenes and everything else look. So can't wait for that. Um, it'll be interesting to see with Project Judge if that actually comes out on PC. I think it's only so far slated for PS4, but it would be uh, interesting to see if that eventually comes to PC as well. I, it seemed like they were commit, they were starting to commit their releases to PC because uh, basically when they announced Kiwami 2 for um, console, they announced Kwame 1 for PC. So I don't know if it's just that much further back. So it's probably got something to do with the Japanese release schedule. They only have so much time, you know, to uh, optimize and, and move things and everything else. Uh, there's only so much you can do. So um, I'm assuming that everything's a little bit delayed. But uh, even so, it's a really amazing that they're doing this. And I don't mind that it's all delayed. Um, it'll give me more time to play the games, actually. Uh, because I, I don't... There, I have no chance at this point of finishing uh, Yakuza 0 by the time Yakuza Kiwami comes out. So uh, I'm just going to try to you know finish this game in that amount of time, which just so happens to, there's like a gajillion game, games coming out between now and then. But in any case, um, so if you've never played a Yakuza game before, uh, Yakuza is a very strange game. Uh, it's a, it's an open world game that is got a lot of side activities, um, side stories, um, basically like, I would say the tone of the game overall is pretty serious, but all of the side stories, not all of them, but most of them are either very comical or very like sappy so it kind of takes away from the serious tone of the game uh, because of that um, one of the differences in this game from the others is that you have to find a uh, telephone booth to save your game whereas in um, Yakuza 6 uh, you can just save anywhere um, so uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, the other thing is, is that I didn't remember this beast style, um, being in any of the games. Uh, it basically, uh, focuses on multiple opponents and being able to use, um, items in the environment as weapons, um, to do massive damage. Um, unlike in the uh, other two that are dealing more with like um, with uh, brawler style, you're kind of looking for something in the environment to slam somebody into. In the rush style, you're trying to do as much damage as you possibly can um, in the shortest amount of time. Um, all three styles are selectable. Uh, you have to learn the beast style from that... Um, trainer that you just saw but once you uh go through that side quest uh you can't well not go through the side quest once you do that little side vignette thing uh you'll have access to the beast style and it'll be just like all the other ones uh, as you can see it it looks practically the same as all the other um as all the other trees so you need money to um get new uh, moves and new uh, abilities and things like that. You put the money into the tree and you get more, uh, you get new uh, features unlocked. Uh, sometimes it's more health. Sometimes it's a different move. Sometimes you get more heat. Heat is what charges up your meter so you can do like these big finishing moves. Um, all this different stuff, it's very, uh, this, this is like what the game has been for quite a while. Uh, this isn't the beginning of what the, of this. Um, so it, it's a very fun game. It's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things you can do in it. Um, a, a ton of things, so many things that I could be here for this entire length as a video talking about all of the side content that is available, but I'm not going to do that. 
<laughs> that would be a little that would be a little much. So one of the big things that tends to happen with open world games and stuff like Yakuza, but not exactly like it, more like games that are billed as straight open world, is that you get open world fatigue. Uh, there are so many quests, so many things in the map, so many little <clears throat> activities and things to do that you just get like, oh, I'm so done. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to make some progress. I just want to do something to make some progress. I don't want to just do these little short side things, just taking over little areas and all this other stuff. Well, the fun part about a, a, a Yakuza, for me at least, is that it totally eschews that for the most part. Um, and the way it does that is by making the player able to play the story either as quickly or as slowly as they want. So you will just come upon different things um, in the world, like this for instance, where you're just listening in to something going on, and sometimes it's a matter of you can intervene or you don't have to or you can investigate or you don't have to investigate, things like that. As you can see, I'm not going to investigate. So um, all of these things happen and you don't have to interact with them. You don't have to interface with them. You can just move on. You can just go to the next story thing and uh, you don't have to deal with... Um, anything that you don't want to necessarily now what I have been told is overall you have to do some uh, you have to do the fights um, you get into these random encounters and they are they're not exactly random they're kind of baked into the world but you get into these random fights and you kind of have to do at least a good percentage of them because that's how you get stronger and the game can get a lot harder to deal with if you don't get stronger so uh, I would say that you don't have to do every single one but I would say to do the majority of them you know do like 60% um, and you can and you know when this is gonna happen because you get these little boxes um, and you have a couple minutes to get away um, you know uh, if you have something else you'd rather do or that you just don't feel like it right now or whatever. Um, my suggestion would be to do most of them um, if you are at all uh, unsure of yourself as far as um, your familiarity with the different fighting styles. Uh, once you get familiar with the fighting styles, you can, you know, more or less do whatever you want like you can just you can either ignore it or you can do it or you don't have to or whatever but uh, until you get familiar with it I would say you should do them often because they're good practice because um, you will get into fights with high level Akuza that will it will be difficult then if you aren't very familiar with the fight you know your fighting style and also if you aren't leveled up somewhat um, there are some fights in the beginning of the game that if you don't, um, if you aren't ready for them by having done a few of the, of, you know, the open world fights, then they can be very difficult. Uh, they do try to eschew that by having you fight underling a Yakuza before that, um, and I think that helps. But uh, it definitely, there's still hard, it would still be a harder fight if you were not familiar with what you were doing by the time you got to that point. As it turned out, it was not the first time that I had, I played this game on the PS3 and it was not the first time that I had, I had fought these guys. So um, it didn't, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I think I rented Yakuza or something, or maybe I bought it. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but, um, yeah, I think I, I I think I had purchased it when they did the re-release, not the um, not on the PS4, but on the PS3. Uh, I think they did one re-release on the PS3 uh, of 
like a Yakuza Zero or they redid Yakuza One or something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, it was a very similar situation, and I was able to kind of faintly remember what it was going to be like after I had started doing it, and you know, after I went through it for a little while. So, not a problem for me. But by the same token, it's not going to be that way for everybody. So, uh, in order for you to get into a for not all the stores are able for you to get in. Not all the restaurants are a, are open for you to get into them. Only the ones that are lit up with a different color box um, allow you to go in. And most of them, you do not have full 3D control while you are in there. Uh, you can only do it from a single camera angle that they have given you uh, to use. Um, the reason why you want to go into establishments is you want to either buy items, mostly to increase your stamina or your uh, heat, um, or you want to do it for the same reason that I'm at this restaurant, which is to get some health back. Uh, all of the money for all these different things uh, is very uh, small compared to the money that you are constantly making by doing the fights. Uh, that's why you want to do the fights to make money, uh, to level up, to be able to keep your health up, all those different things. Um, but anyway, uh, the major thing with Yakuza for anybody who's a fan of the, of the series is the side stuff. Um, the main story is great. I appreciate the main story. Um, in any of them, it's, uh, kind of a mafia style story most of the time. Uh, there is sometimes like a big twist. Um, but the, um, the side stuff is always more, you know, it's like funny or it's, um, kind of sappy or dopey or, um, it's just something really weird, uh, sometimes as well. Sometimes they pick something really, the, the, the situation is really strange. Um, and, uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I always like doing the side stuff if I can, if I think I'm going to like it. Sometimes if I don't think I'm going to like it, I still end up doing it because it's surprised me a lot of times. So, um, you know, that, that part's interesting. Uh, the other thing about this I think that you should know is that I believe it takes place in the 80s. Um, so things are a little different, uh, not only in Japan, but also in uh, just the whole world um, at this point. So some of the styles of clothing, some of the um, stuff that they talk about, uh, all that kind of thing is... Um, different than you would ex than you would expect if it was taking place in the modern times. I mean, obviously there's no cell phones. Um, there are no, um, there, there, you know, you have to go to pay phones to talk on the phone. There's, uh, there aren't a lot of real complicated, um, computers or video games or anything like that. It's all very simple. Uh, retro style kind of stuff. This is that side story, the sub story with the uh, with the deck collector who's going to train you. Uh, I don't know if you guys were watching that in the, near the beginning of the video, um, but they uh, she offered to train me in this particular beast style, and it's just a short mini game that you can do to uh, increase your CP, which is uh, some points that you use to put in to. Uh, to put into your uh, upgrades. So anyway, um, so it's real simplistic, but obviously it gets harder as you keep uh, paying to go up in difficulty. Uh, I hope you also get more rewards then for doing that. So there's the there's a reason to do that. Uh, as you can see that the uh, animations, the, the lip syncing and all that stuff, is kind of odd. Um, it's because they're speaking in Japanese and it's translating in the subtitles in English. So even when there's no spoken dialogue, all the lip syncing is for Japanese. It's not for English. So it's very off uh, as far as the 
you know, what comes up and at what time and, and what it should look like and everything else. So just bear that in mind. Um, there are fully voiced scenes, but uh, there are not as many of them as this sort of thing. And I, I'm sure they do this to, uh, you know, keep the budget down because uh, it is comparatively to like something like Far Cry 5, for instance, it's a very small team. So, um, you know, it's a modern it's a modern team, but it is not as large as something like, you know, uh, Far Cry or Assassin's Creed or Tomb Raider or anything like that. So that's why you have this these two different styles of storytelling constantly throughout the game because uh, they're trying to keep the costs down. And uh, But when they do, do cutscenes, uh, they are freaking amazing looking, uh, especially on the computer. They are just incredible. Uh, I was shocked at how good they were the first time I looked at it. I was like, oh my god, really? Because um, I'm used to the PS4 with Yakuza. I'm used to you know the PS3 with Yakuza. Certainly not something that of this extremely amazing uh you know quality so they really did a good job with the uh, pc uh cinematics as far as you know rendering and everything else in that way um i would really like to be able to turn everything up to ultra uh i would really like it if they supported us a <laughs> um you know, there's a lot of things I would really like about this if they would have done, but, you know, there's only so much you can expect from a small team, from, uh, you know, they're basically working in a market that they don't normally work in. This is, as I said, the first game, the first Yakuza game that has come out on, P uh, on PC. So, you know, I think I can understand why maybe this is not a, a, a fully optimized port. Uh, but even so, it does run very well. It runs as well as it needs to, so to speak. Um, I get commonly, as I said earlier, between um, like 34 and 45 frames a second, which is not bad uh, for a game of this pace. Uh, you know, the game was originally 30 frames a second on the P on the PS3 or PS4, so it's not like uh, it's not like it's some kind of crazy. Like, oh, this doesn't run well at all, kind of a thing. Um, it could run a lot better, and if you took uh, visual uh, cut, if you took visual hits, um, you could definitely get it to run way better, as I had stated before. You could get over 100 frames a second, um, which might be really good uh, if you had, uh, if you didn't, if, I mean, I only have a 60 hertz monitor, so... Um, if I had a you know 120 or 144 hertz monitor, I bet it would look absolutely amazing in that uh, in that style. But I can't, I don't see the visual benefits from running at a high frame rate. So I instead maxed out the super sampling as much as I possibly could, and also just turned up all the turn the anti-aliasing to ultra because why not? If it's not going to make a big you know, impact on the, on the, on the video memory, what difference does it make? So, um, oh, for anybody who is interested, I will probably put something in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider video comment section, uh, about this, but I figured I'd put it actually in a video in case people don't, uh, people haven't paid attention, but I had mentioned in the Shadow of the Tomb Raider video that I was going to try turning up the anti-aliasing, trying uh, with the normal hair works and everything else, and see if that made a big difference in the frame rate. Um, it actually does uh, make a huge difference in the frame rate. Um, the uh, two times, M well, the four times SMAA um, kills the frame rate. Uh, it goes, in, in 4K, it goes all the way down to 20 frames a second or less, depending on what the, depending on what the what the subject in the scene's doing. Um, the normal hair doesn't seem to make any difference at all, uh, frame rate wise. Um, so uh, now I'm running it with normal hair, but uh, as far as the anti-aliasing, it just kills the frame rate. Even 
uh, two times SMAA is uh, it really uh, takes a hit to the frame rate uh, to the point where I think it was the average was about oh god the average was like 61 frames or a little less and it would go on anywhere from 55 all the way up to 70 but I couldn't tell the visual difference at all. Um, I was watching it while I was benchmarking, and I, I couldn't tell uh, the visual difference between two times SMAA and not having it on at all. So um, I just shut it off uh, because it was like, oh, well, if I can't tell the visual difference, what is it there for? Um, the hair, I can't tell the visual difference either, but it doesn't make an impact on the frame rate, so... I'll leave it on, <laughs> but um, yeah, and uh, NVIDIA Experience Optimizer seemed to think that I could run the game uh, just fine uh, with uh, two times, this is a, uh, this is from earlier, actually, this kid was waiting in line for um, this video game that he had saved his allowance to get, and uh, now this guy just stole it from him. So now this starts a side story, a side mission where you uh, help this kid get his cartridge back from um, harder and harder, supposedly, uh, to fight enemies. Uh, which, of course, for Kiryu is like a walk in the park. He fights five guys at once, usually, so not a big deal. Uh, so anyway, but uh, so that's what this story is about. And the ending is very sappy and uh, very... Um, sitcom like but uh it's still fine i mean it, you know you it's not a big deal it's a nice uh diversion and it was a diversion for me because i was a little lost i wasn't uh reading the quest text uh all the way through or wasn't paying attention enough or whatever you want to call it and i was kind of lost and just wandering around so this was a nice little diversion for me and that's what basically these side stories are supposed to be they're supposed to be a diversion. Uh, so anyway, as I was saying, the uh, NVIDIA experience seemed to think that the two times MSAA, uh, SMAA and the normal hair works uh, were just fine. Um, but I don't know what they were basing that on because, as I said, the frame rate could go pretty low. Um, I think it was um, an average of 70, but... Even so, um, it could also go as low as, you know, um, 35 or 40. So it's not like, uh, <laughs> it's not like it would run mostly fine and then just every once in a while dip, especially when I was getting without any aliasing at all, I was getting, um, anywhere between 80 and 90 frames a second, um, like, 90% of the time. So um, it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't worth the uh, performance hit. I suppose you could say that, well, that's true, but since you have a 60 hertz monitor anyway, you're not seeing the difference between 70 and 90 anyway, um, which is true, uh, which is why when it dips below 60 with the two, uh, two times SMAA, it is a bigger deal because that is performance that I will see. So that is the issue uh, for me. Whereas, uh, you know, if it was sticking to 60 or above with the two times MSA, uh, SMA, I probably would have left it. Uh, the problem is, too, is, though, that I didn't notice the difference. Uh, I don't mean in frame rate, but I meant in, in visual fidelity. So without seeing the visual fidelity difference, um, I felt like, what was the point? Um, I'm sure it was there, but I'm sure it was so minor that I wasn't seeing it. Um, you know, I'm not playing this on a TV. I'm playing it on a 27-inch 27, 27 monitor about, I don't know, a foot from my face. So it's not like maybe two feet. Um, well, it's more like a foot. Yeah, it's like about a foot from my face. So it's not like it's, you know, oh, well, it's there. You just can't see it or something because you're too far away. It's like, no, not really. If it was if it was at all worthwhile, <laughs> I would be seeing it. So, um, 
yeah, so it's kind of it, it's kind of pointless, uh, but it was fine. Um, I'm glad that the uh, I'm I'm glad that I have the option to turn it up, and uh, I've seen obviously with the 2080 Ti that uh, they um, really have um, pushed up the frame rate uh, with everything maxed out, which I'm assuming means um, four times. Uh, SMAA. I'm assuming. Um, if it isn't, then well, then what's the point? Um, in those cases, it's getting I think 40 or 50 frames um, as an average, which I'm not entirely sure why that would be. Um, no, that's right. That was the 2080. The 2080 Ti is uh, gets 70. Yeah, I think it's got a 70 average. Uh, 70 to 90 average uh, with that uh, which I found good but by the same token for that much more power I felt like that was kind of disappointing um, I felt like it should be doing you know 120 frames a second or something um, instead of just you know just a little more uh, I feel like they should uh, be able to you know that a car that's that expensive and has that much power should be able to get through something like that relatively easily. But I don't know. It's very strange. It's, it's a, I see a lot of benchmark numbers and, uh, from those new cards and a lot of them are baffling to me. Um, but then I think about it and I realize that I'm a lot of times when I play those games, I don't have like any aliasing on. I don't have motion blur on. I don't have, um, uh, I don't have, um, yeah, any aliasing, motion blur, any film grain, that kind of stuff. So it's possible that those things are contributing when you turn it on ultra to the lesser performance um, than you know you really should have. Uh, I mean, there's an absolutely no reason <clears throat> that I can see in the game to have four times uh, MS, uh, SMAA. I, I can't see it in 4K. I can't see why you should have to have that. Um, 1080p? Sure, yeah. I definitely would think that there would be some definite use uh, for that, but uh, not in 4K. Um, and as far as motion blur and, uh, that kind of stuff eating up power, I feel like it's pointless, um, to eat up video memory for something like that. Um, any video memory, I mean, even if you're losing five frames a second, it's just sort of like, why, you know, why are we, you know, why bother? Um, the other thing too, is that, uh, the cards are HDR enabled, so it's possible that. If they're running the benchmarks with HDR, then uh, that also could be uh, contributing. I believe that HDR is something like 5 to 10 frames a second, depending on the uh, game that you're running it in. So that also could have an effect. Uh, my monitor does not support HDR. Not uh, It just supports a higher color spectrum, uh, higher color depth, excuse me, not true HDR. Um, which, considering the price of the monitor, was fine. I wanted a 4K monitor. I wasn't so much worried about HDR at the time uh, because it was going to be like, oh, you could buy a $400 monitor or you could buy a $1,000 monitor. <laughs> it's like, oh, um, well, <laughs> I think I'd rather have the $400 monitor. Sorry. Um, yeah. At some point in the future, I would like to get a 4K monitor with g-sync and hdr and all that good stuff um but that probably won't be for quite a while um also because you know it is impossible to um you know record and have that kind of stuff for any kind of large number of the audience i mean i don't think pretty sure youtube doesn't support hdr on the computer i think it's only on what is it I think it's only on the app and it's only on the phone that they support it. I mean, it, it's like, you know, 
such a small percentage of your audience that's going to be able to enjoy it with HDR that it's just not worth the extra money and time and incredible. I mean, it's an incredibly longer amount of time because the uh, the videos are, you know, the videos are bigger and um, they're going to take longer to upload and uh, everything else. So I, I just don't see that that would be worth it. Um, so it, it, and the other thing too is, of course, you have to look at also the bit rate at which YouTube presents these things. You can barely tell, you know, that something's HDR or it isn't. So I think also you have to think about that as well. So it's, it's just sort of, at this point, it's a long way from being like, oh, everybody has to have this, or it would be really good if everybody had it. Um, it's more like, wow, that's weird. Why would you go through all that for that? Um, you know, for the few people that are able to take advantage of it. Uh, as I said, I think you have to have the app only, and then it only is on certain phones. Um, so I don't think that that's uh, very worth uh, although I don't know, maybe it'll be on, maybe it's on TVs as well. Uh, I don't know. I know that uh, my Blu-ray player that has apps, uh, which YouTube is one of them, uh, does not support it. But uh, who knows? Anyway. Um, so that's about it. Uh, I want to show one more. That was the map. That is the map, incidentally. I want to show the story mission, uh, and the, here it is. In the interest of time, I uh, cut it a little bit. So it's these guys, and I didn't know how far. Sometimes you don't know how far you have to, how close to the the story thing you have to get in order to trigger it. So that's what I was trying to figure out there. Uh, but anyway, um, so this is the story mission. We are about. Oh my, we are three or four hours into the game here uh this is definitely not the beginning of the game in the sense that you know you're not being introduced to characters and things like that um takibana real estate is uh this group that uh approached kiryu after he got kicked out of his yakuza family and they want him to work for them and help them to fight against the Yakuza. And then also they're promising him that if he does help them, that they will do stuff for him personally. Uh, so unlike most people in a really bad situation that Kiryu was in, um, he said, oh, that's nice. Um, let me get back to you. And so now he's investigating uh, this uh group and he's finding out that they are very powerful in this area of Japan that he's in and they're getting more and more powerful they keep uh, they're even uh, starting to control and influence different Yakuza families so he's kind of trying to figure out what the heck is going on and that's what basically he was he and he was trying to He's trying to find uh, as many people as he possibly can who have experience with this group so that he can um, so that he can learn more about them. Um, and uh, that's what the basis of this was. This guy was from a Yakuza family. He was trying to collect uh, from this guy and uh, he's like, you know, you're not going to talk to this guy until I'm done talking to him. And Kiryu's like, yeah, right. So that's what this, the basis of this was. And the reason why he needs to talk to this guy was his company was pushed out of the area that he was in by this Takibana uh, real estate. So that's why he needs to talk to him. So, and that's what the story mission is going to consist of. And now he's going to go talk to another guy in the uh, in the same area, um, and find out m more, and we're gonna have an actual uh, cutscene. 
So that's why I left all this in because we're, we're leading up to an actual cutscene so you guys can see the quality of the actual cutscenes in the game, which it's, they're very good. Um, they're unusually good, in my opinion, anyway. They're, they're one of the things that make Yakuza games, uh, this game in particular, because of the high fidelity of the video, um, above a lot of other open world, like open world or semi open world games. Um, I feel like this, the consistency of the cutscenes in this game rivals even like Far Cry 5. Uh, which I feel like Far Cry 5 has some good cutscenes in it, but they are very few and far between compared to what you normally get, which is not, which is stuff that isn't that great. So this game actually uh, has a lot of different levels of quality as far as its cutscenes and story content, but when it really wants to do it, it throws everything into it. It's amazing. So a lot of this stuff is uh, a little bit shoehorned in because it's a uh, translation for Western audiences. Uh, it's a very difficult to, I mean, some of these things that if you knew Japanese, you could just look at it and immediately know what was going on. Whereas in uh, this game, you have to have more visual prompts to be able to tell you uh, what is going on as opposed to uh, like I said like if you were a native Japanese speaker you would be able to tell immediately what was going on but uh, unfortunately uh, just due to you know the uh, the translation you know trying to localize uh, I mean I wouldn't say the, lo the localization job is necessarily bad but what I would say is that they don't they don't go all the way Mostly, I think, because they know that people who like Japanese games also like the flavor of being in that world and, you know, having everything be very similar to what it is in the originals. But also because, again, limited budget and they only can do so much, which is just fine. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, in fact, I think, like I said, I think it adds something to this game to the yakuza games that maybe is missing in some others that are a little more localized uh which is really cool i think uh the same way that persona games are very lightly localized um as opposed to um other games so it adds a, a decent amount of flavor to those as well so it's uh we're going to be ending here very shortly so um, I am going to uh, leave you. Um, <laughs> if you did like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. あんた家族で店に住んでいる。住む場所別にするよ。なんてないからね。神さんはビルに住み着いてるホームレスが怖いって。奥から出てこなくなったよ。連中よこしたのも立花不動産の嫌がらせ。ホームレスにビルの中で
お、小田さんどうも、生瀬さんどうすか、立ち退きの件考えてくれましたう、うちは出ていきませんよそうは言っても、このビルはもううちがオーナーになってるわけだし勝手な都合を並べて居座られちゃ困っちゃうんだよなだからって毎日毎日嫌がらせしやがってうちに赤ん坊だっているんだぞ見ない顔だけどそちらさんはねえ生瀬さんこんなヤクザに頼ると後が怖いですよあいにく俺は仇の人間だがこの店の用心棒と思ってくれてる用心棒誰に対してのです立花不動産で肩着ずらしたヤクザだ別に部外者が何用が構いませんがまあそれより今日はちょっと預かってきたもんがありましてねこれ人生一家の親分さんからです何それ今まで生瀬さんが人生一家に取られたみかじめ料月3万の3年分に色付けて200万生瀬さんの代わりに取り返しておきましたよ極道から金を取り立てたあんたらがか100万それとうちの社長から気持ちとしてプラス200万お子さんのミルク代にもう200万かなねえ生瀬さんもうこれで手打ちましょうよ早いとここのビルから出てっちゃもらえませんかねか金の問題じゃねえ俺はな勝手な理屈で弱いもんの人生好きにできるってあんたらのその態度が気に食わねえんだよきれいごとはよしましょうや生瀬さんもうこれ以上ごねてもあんたのもらいは増えませんからあっ見えすぎた芝居しやがって金の問題じゃなかったら何の問題だこら何かあんたにはあの鳴き声が聞こえねえのかの前で親の顔にさっさば叩きつけるのが立花不動産のやり方かそちらさんも人様に説教を垂れるほど真っ当な人間には見えませんがね<笑>まあいいでしょう生瀬さんにはこちらの誠意が通じたと見えますし何勝手なこと言ってんだ生瀬さん今夜あたりお電話いただけそうですねいいお返事を期待していますよ今時こんな町で妙な正義感におわせちゃ命が危ないよお兄さんおわさびはほどほどにしないとねあんたこの店閉めて出ていくのかああ出ていけと言われてさっさと出てった連中はバカだ辛抱を重ねりゃこういうボーナスが出てくるってのによ。
あんたさっきまでいた他のホームレス仲間はどうしたんだもうここでの仕事は済んだってさ次のとこに移されてったよ次のとこどこださあねいろいろだよ立花さんとこは手広くやってるからどういう連中なんだ立花不動産っての何が目的か知らんけどあそこに関わんのはやめときなあの人たちはカムロ町の闇だよ闇俺から見りゃヤクザなんかよりよっぽど怖いカムロ町中に目と耳を張り巡らせてるから相手がヤクザだろうが弱み見つけ出してすぐに金玉握っちまう人生一家もその手で追い払われたってわけだ<笑>聞いた話じゃ人生一家の組長この間登場会本家から呼び詰めさせられたらしい何本家への上納金ちょろまかしてんのが匿名で作られてねもっとも作られたのはそのほんの一部全部ぶちまけられたら組長絶対殺されるっていう立花が小出しにチクって脅しをかけたってこと別に俺は立花さんとこがやったなんて一言も言ってないよただヤクザのそんな弱み探り出せんのあそこ以外にはまずないだろうけどね俺があとあんたに言ってやれるのは立花からは手ぇ引けって忠告くらいだね